Um, well, we're originally from England in Manchester, but we've lived in the BVI for over 14 years. Can you um, talk me a bit through what happened to bring you out here to Bermuda? Um, well, Hurricane Irma hit us and took out most of our island. So yeah, we were kind of forced to move here by you know, we, we were fine compared to others, but the whole, island, the whole island itself was devastated, so it was unlivable for people who needed to be in school as well, so lots of people had to get out. So you were actually there when the hurricane? Yeah. yeah. What was that experience like? It was insane. It was so much worse than everyone expected. Um, the wind was just incredible. It was, it, was, it was a really humbling experience, but it was, you know, the house was shaking and it's a big concrete house, so you don't really expect that. It was something unheard of. Yeah. So, did your house sustain any major damage? Yeah, yeah our house was fine compared to Compared to others, others. yeah. We had a few blown in windows and uh, like parts of uh, the walls peeled off, not like the wall itself, but the decorative wood covering it peeled off. And the house was flooded as well. Yeah, and um, yeah there was um, like a tree, a, a branch, a big tree trunk was in my bathroom roof. That was the one major breach in, in the roof of the house. Yeah. And there were like like holes in the on the outside of the wall from rocks that had like pelted it in. Like so bullet holes. Like the size of my fist. Yeah, proper. Proper hole, so. But compared to others, we were lucky. How long did this go on for? Um, it went on for around eight hours. Eight hours or so. Yeah. yeah. It depends on so like how long it went on for because it was really bad for five or so hours, mm -hmm. but it went on until like it was calm the next morning. But through the night, it was still windy, so it was kind of like a gradual slope. Of was Irma a direct hit? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we, we went out in the eye. You know, we had 10 minutes where it was sunny. Um, we just fixed some stuff, and then the second part was probably the worst for us. Okay. Um, and that's when, you know, our hurricane room got breached. Um, it was started leaking in water, and the windows were getting pelted with rocks, so yeah. we had to move to the basement and waited it out there. Experienced a hurricane before? We mm -hmm. have, but not nothing as bad as this. Yeah, we've experienced fours before, but never. Mm. We never felt unsafe in our own home. Yeah. Um, at the hands of a hurricane. What was it like um, after it had passed? Scary. It, it, it was like a bomb went off on the entire island, and yeah. there wasn't a tree standing, there wasn't a leaf on a tree, everything was brown. Um, it was, it was, it was surreal. I mean, yeah. there's telephone poles down on the roads, roofs, houses, you know, without roofs. There were fridges in people's backyards that didn't even belong to them. Um, mm -hmm. Cars tipped over, uh, windows smashed in cars. And it was like, once you think that your house is damaged, and then you look outside and you look at your neighbors, and then yeah. you realize that their roof is in your backyard, and then that sort of experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's like The Walking Dead almost. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. like that you kind see, of you see people on the street with belongings crawling through the roads trying to find somewhere yeah. to stay because their houses are destroyed. So whereabouts in BBA did you live? We lived on top of a hill called Haversill in Tortola. When did you realize that you had to leave and it wasn't? Well, um, we, I mean, personally I didn't want to leave, but um, our parents kind of made us leave because, you know, of school and all that. It was getting unsafe as well. People were looting and there's lots of violence going on down there. Um, the, yeah, the prisoners, all the prisoners all escaped. All the prisoners escaped. Okay. Um, so yeah, yeah. There, were, there were a lot of rumors going around the first couple of days because no one had, you know, self-service, no one could connect, so it was really word of mouth. Yes. Um, and so you hear reports of Jose's coming in a Category 3 directly at us. So everyone's trying to get ready for Jose because that was like the next couple of days away. And there, you had heard things like uh, 60 people were, you know, dead on Anagata and neighboring islands. But you don't know if it's true or not. You just hear what other people are saying. 
Yeah. Okay. Did Jose hit as well? No. No. No, not really. Just that, one, that, that hit, but not to the extent that Puerto Rico got hit and not as badly as Irma hit us. It's the very edge of Maria yeah. hit us, but that was only a little bit of wind number in. So how come you ended up in Bermuda? Um, What's the connection there? Dad's uh, job. Yeah. Yeah. What does he do? He's a lawyer for Conyers Dublin Fairman. Okay. So the five of you came in? Oh, well, my dad actually stayed. So, oh, okay. so he stayed in Tortola for a bit while we were in Puerto Rico, but then he came to Bermuda with us because we were in... Maybe four days after the hurricane, we were evacuated there, um, and that was the place where everyone was trying to trying to get to. So you had Richard Branson there with all his staff and people trying to organize relief. But yeah, that was the place where everyone. That's where everyone went to go figure out where they're going to go next yeah. and what's going to happen next. Okay. So how long did you stay there for? A About week. A week. Yeah. yeah. And did you leave before Maria? Yeah, yes. we left before Maria. Where did you go after that? Bermuda. 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 So, came, so when did you actually get here? Last, Last Sunday, Sunday night. Sunday. Yeah. So the one that's just passed? Uh, no, the one before that, yeah. So when did you start up at Warwick Academy? Tuesday. Tuesday. Last Tuesday. Yeah. And what's that been like? It's, it's, been, it's been great because Warwick has been, they've been so welcoming um, and that's what I was mostly kind of nervous about. It's like, how is a new, new school going to take a bunch of, you know, kids kind of forced in from a traumatic experience? But everyone was really nice and the teachers were understanding. So it's been, it's been really nice to have that relief. It's definitely a change though, because for example, like in my class, we had seven kids in the senior year. Oh. And to go from seven to, to 50 kids in my class, it's, it's strange. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And I'm, I'm doing a different like, system I'm doing IGSEs now, but I used to do MYP. Okay. And what do you think about Bermuda? It's 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 a not a culture shock, but it's like coming from another island. I expected, you know, the same kind of culture that I have, you know, that we have in Tortola. But it's it's very nice. It's very groomed. <laughs> yeah. It's very proper. What do you mean by <laughs> Like all the bushes are cut nicely and the roads there's painted walls and the roads are good. Yeah. It's taken mm -hmm. care of yeah. as opposed to, you know. Yeah. A lot of people, yeah. yeah a lot of people and they're all nice. They're really, really nice. nice. Yeah, they're helpful. And understanding, so it's very mm. nice. Do you know how long we can be staying for? Just oh, maybe a year. Like we want to finish the school year, and then if Tortola is up and running, which it should be um, for school and stuff, then go back. We just want to get him finished in 12th grade, or yeah. year 13. Yeah. So yeah, what years are you all in? I'm year 12, Leo is year 13. In my final year. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on year 10. Year 10. Yeah. And so your daddy's still out? He has, so he was here and then he just left to go to London and he's about to go back to Tortola to look at the damage in the office and he's working with the military on Tortola right now to kind of secure things up and get things up and running again. How about your friends um, back in Tortola? Wow. Stay in touch? Um, I mm -hmm. haven't talked to a bunch of friends who were in Tortola. Um, I received contact from some of my friends that are still there, so yeah. I don't know. But we did have are. one friend uh, who went to Puerto Rico the day after that we did, and they stayed in Puerto Rico and got hit by Maria, and we haven't heard from them now. So yeah. I have a, quite a few friends in Puerto Rico. I've heard from none of them since Maria hit. So What's that like? It's scary. I mean, it was the same on Tortola. You, you, do, you don't know who's... I mean, it's hard to think like that, but you don't know who's alive, really, because it was such a, such a bad hurricane. Like no one could have prepared for that, and it's just scary to not know what's going on and not be able to contact people. So, whereabouts are you staying here? 
Southampton. Southampton. No. There are a few people that were on Tortola and that are now here as well, mm -hmm. and who uh, some of them are actually our neighbours, um, okay. which is kind of nice. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I've asked you what I wanted to ask. Is there anything that you wanted to add? Um, just to like, if there was another hurricane like this, prepare as much as you can because, um. The best thing that you could probably do is board up your windows because if your window breaks in then the hurricane kind of comes inside and then it takes apart your inside allow. I think the severity of this hurricane was much more than anyone anticipated or could have prepared for. You know, whole houses blew completely down, you know, proper concrete walls were taken down, you know, steel was bent from the wind because, and you know, you'd expect steel and concrete to hold up. And everyone in the media has been, you know, saying, you know, our house is made of cardboard and wood. That's that's what's going around. And, you know, they're proper houses that they're were completely, completely annihilated. Um, but uh, one thing I definitely want to say is find out a way to help. There's a site called BVI Relief, Relief yeah. And donate what you can to that because lots of people there need it right now. And especially places like our old school, Cedar International School, they're currently doing um, like school for any kid from like ages three to eighteen. Anybody doesn't have to be a Cedar student, but anybody, if, you know, just so they can provide some sort of, you know, education while parents can deal with um, their houses and stuff. So it's really nice that our school gets to do that, and it would be really great if people could donate to that school so that you know they can continue to provide education for kids. Free meals for all kids. Yeah. yeah, there's our old, like, the guy who ran our lunch program at school, he's doing this thing now, he's asking people to sponsor him a day, so it's, it's like 40 or $60 a day, and he can feed, you know, plus of 200 kids a day for free, so that's something that, something good that's happening down there. Is there a sense of the community really pulling together? Oh yeah. For yeah. sure. It was nice that um, the days after Irma, when everyone was, you know, trying to get into town because there was cell service in town. The only spot there was, you know, contact with the outside world was in town. So everyone was going to town and you pass people on the road and they're all cheerful and high-fiving each other and talking to, to each other on the road and on the street, you know, keeping spirits high, which is really nice to see in a time like this. So once everything's built back up again, Going back home. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's going to take a while though. They're predicting, I think it's March for power back to the island. So, because, you know, every single line and tower is down. Um, and, you know, like for example, my friend and I, we cut a path down to the main road off our hill. And that involved cutting power lines with machetes and chopping down power poles that were blocking roads. Mm -hmm. So, and that's not just us who's done that, everyone's done that to try to get out. So, there's a lot of that on top of it. We live on the, the opposite side of the island from the airport and on the drive to the airport, I don't think I saw one telephone pole standing. They were all fallen and broken and the wires were everywhere. There wasn't one standing. I barely saw people with roofs yeah. when we were driving to the airport. Yeah. And some people's houses are like teared like directly in half. Mm -hmm. 